Have you seen The Toxic Avenger? It was a 1984 American superhero comedy splatter film that spawned three film sequels, a stage musical production, a Marvel comic book series, a video game, and a children's TV cartoon. Sure you haven't seen it? And of course, like most popular interpretations of environmental tragedies, it showed how little the public understands the waste issue. The plot concerned a janitor in New Jersey who gets thrown in a drum of toxic waste, becomes hideously disfigured, but gains superhuman size and strength. Of course, this isn't what happens when the human body encounters toxic waste. Just ask the children of Assad's chemical attacks in Syria. Toxic chemicals do disfigure, and they cause terrible burns and cancer, and they kill, but they will never make you stronger. There are no upsides. But they can be neutralized, without violence. The hopeful thing about toxic wastes and chemicals that are potentially hazardous is that they are all made up of the fundamental elements of the periodic table and can be endlessly broken down into those elements and recombined in different ways. They can be recycled. They can be made safe again. Chlorine, phosgene, mustard gas, sarin, and other nerve agents used and then banned after World War I can be rendered harmless, often by simple treatments like high temperature incineration and chemical transformation, if people are willing to spend the money. It always comes down to money, doesn't it? But you know, of all the types of war we might face, biological, chemical, and nuclear, I worry about nuclear war, not chemical warfare. I explained this in my lecture for module TWILB dealing with radiation and nuclear waste. FYI, radioactive spider bites don't give you superpowers either. And then I worry about biological warfare, because life does this incredible job of, well, going viral and of self-replicating with living creatures parasitizing other organisms and using them as hosts to reproduce and spread further. Plagues and outbreaks of diseases like Ebola scare me. Even otherwise ridiculous popular dystopian fictions like The Walking Dead and World War Z and 28 Days Later and even Zoo haunt my dreams. Both biological and nuclear contamination of the world seems to imply end of life as we know it scenarios. But chemical pollutants, the use of chemical weapons, Terrifying at the outset, to be sure, especially if you're in the immediate area of contamination, seems solvable to me over the long run, as is the legacy of the chemical warfare we've been waging on our ecosystems with pesticides like DDT and herbicides like Agent Orange and defoliants and all the chemical toxins they leave behind. Chemical pollutants we've been recklessly throwing into our environments for the last two centuries. They are horrible, to be sure. But if we have the will, the problem is solvable, literally a question of solvents and solutes and solutions and reagents and reactants. Acid spills can be neutralized by bases, alkali spills by acids, superfund sites can be cleaned up through phytoremediation using plants and microremediation using fungi. Life is chemistry and chemicals are the building blocks of everything with the right know-how and the right catalysts and the right inputs of energy and labor, an almost magical alchemy can be done, transforming the most noxious substances into safe inputs for other chemical processes. This is the core insight of industrial ecology, which we cover in module PHRB, the new economics of industrial ecology. The output of one process can and should be the input of another. In this module, we go into depth and detail about ways that industrial chemicals and toxic wastes can and are being modified through chemistry and biology and plasma gasification to become valuable inputs once again. We review the painful and shameful legacy of chemical pollution from Rachel Carson's Silent Spring to the horrors of industrial accidents like the chemical release at the Bhopal India uh, plant and the cruel negligence of dumping at Love Canal to the unconscionable suffering caused to soldiers and civilians by Agent Orange and depleted uranium. Despite all these two common terror-draped events, we look for the alchemical, non-toxic silver lining that turns poisonous materials if not into gold, then into something shining and hopeful. And hopefully we can inspire you to crack open that old high school or college chemistry book and start applying the lessons to your own life and community and turn yourself into a superhero. Hopefully one not, hopefully one not disfigured by toxic waste.
And hopefully, we can inspire you to crack open that old high school or college chemistry book and start applying the lessons to your own life and community and turn yourself into a superhero. Hopefully, one not disfigured by toxic waste.